I want to uh, take a kind of like a, a high level view on in general what makes startup hubs successful you know what are the things that the characteristic that make any startup hub successful and then I'll talk about how campus in London are actually uh, addressing this point so this is not my, uh, my invention, Paul Graham, founder of Y Combinator. How many of you know of Y Combinator? Okay. Um, he said that there's three things that make startup have successful. One, you need to have the right environment, so, or the community. If you're an entrepreneur trying to innovate in a city of butchers or cobblers, and you're a technology startup, good luck to you. It's gonna be very hard. The second thing that you need is numbers or density. You know, startups are organisms that are designed to grow very fast and non-linearly. So you need to have this density of network uh, in order to facilitate the growth. And we'll talk a little bit about that. And finally, there's this elusive element of chance, uh, which is the magic powder. And we'll talk about how you create this magic powder as well. Let's start with environment or community. So at campus, I divide this into two categories. One is the physical environment. So we're actually solving a physical problem. Okay? There was no place for entrepreneurs to congregate, meet, network, learn, uh, and essentially build a long-lasting community. When I moved to London five years ago from San Francisco, uh, there were maybe like two events worth attending a month for startups. And one, one was called Minibar, which kind of like tells you what was the focus of the event. And the other one, um, was essentially a monthly event with pitches that had some soul to it, but it happened, you know, way too, uh, this not, not frequently enough, and it was always sold out, so like only 80 people could attend. So there was lack of physical space and content, and the first part is physical environment. This is a picture of the campus message board. It's an analog message board, and it looks like this pretty much every day. We empty it once a week, and then 48 hours it looks like this again. So it's a very vibrant community that, um, that essentially it's self-operated. Then you have like the co-working space. So co-working space is not a new phenomenon, but we believe that uh, we need to give people choices. There's some entrepreneurs that are maybe moonlighting on their idea uh, or maybe already have some other income coming in and they can afford to rent a desk. We actually build a space at campus, a whole floor, that any entrepreneur can sign up and work, for, work from for free. So that's absolutely free. There's thousands of people that are signed up to work from campus. But then there's also co-working space where you can rent a desk and have conference rooms, printer, and all, all these other services in a much cheaper way than the alternative. So previously, if you're an entrepreneur starting up, you would have to get a lease, you know, uh, pay guarantees, and uh, show like jump through many, many hoops to show that you can actually pay the rent for a whole year, where actually you don't know if you're going to be in business in three months. But here you can actually rent a desk for a whole year, a hot desk for 400 pounds, and you're in business. You're surrounded by the community. You're connected to the internet. You have access to all these facilities and mentorship, et cetera. And events are actually a big part of what we do. This is just a, one picture of a Startup Week in London. And I'll talk more about our programs apart from the community events. But events bring people together and create this networking element that's very important in the community. And they're also a great way to pass lessons learned from, uh, from one another. Startup Weekend in particular is a partner of ours globally. It's powered by Google for Entrepreneurs. And if you haven't had a chance to uh, found a startup or be in a startup, go to a Startup Weekend. And on average, people that attend a Startup Weekend, within a year, they either quit their job or found a startup themselves. So uh, you'll probably get the bug if you attend one of these. The other part, we talked about physical space and enabling physical space. Um, you know, I mentioned events as part of it. So any entrepreneur, any startup organization can apply to host an event at campus for free. Uh, there's not a single evening between now and the end of the year that doesn't have minimum three events, including weekends. And this year alone, uh, we'll probably hit uh, more than 1,200 events just at campus. This is very different than when I moved to London five years ago that there were two a month worth attending. Now, you, if you spend a week at campus, I guarantee that you're going to run out of business cards and learn a ton. So apart from the events that are organized by the community, we power programs to help entrepreneurs learn, network, and, and build community. So I'll just mention very, on a very high level what are the programs. The first one is Campus EDU. 
uh, again following the concept of open source, it's an open source curriculum for startups where I partnered with universities, corporate partners and other startups to teach entrepreneurs the skill that they need when they're not learning in an amazing school like this. And this is not an official partnership where like, you know, like I would go to London Business School and sign a contract. I'm actually after the rebels, these professors that believe that there's a better way to teach entrepreneurship, that uh, information needs to be free, and you know, you know some of these platforms that, uh, and stuff like MOOCs, etc. so it's along those lines. Then uh, we have Google Office Hours where every week we bring Googlers to mentor startups one-on-one -on, -one on different topics. So from the beginning of the year until the end of the year, we'll host a thousand mentorship sessions. One week it can be on mobile and Android, the next week it will be on advertising and monetization, and startups can come and ask questions from a Googler um, on a weekly basis. Then we have Campus for Moms, which is a new spin on Accelerator. So rather than bringing entrepreneurs and locking them in for a period of three months, we actually ask moms on maternity leave that wanted to start a company to apply to be part of a cohort that will get special help and support to launch their business. So it's the first time that uh, I did any public speaking and someone beat me and pulled my pants, uh, but it's really inspirational to see all these moms and babies coming and actually getting empowered and having the ability to launch a business, employ people, uh, change the world you know, with their innovative ideas. And then uh, finally we do uh, inspirational talks or campus speaker series where we had people like Eric Schmidt, Patrick Tichette and, and Google execs, Guy Kawasaki, Steve Blank and many names that you would recognize here in the Valley that for entrepreneurs in Europe it's very hard to um, listen to these people live let alone ask them a question. So they come, when they come to London they come to campus and pro bono they give um, a session to startups that gets recorded and broadcasted um, and posted on the campus YouTube channel for anyone else to see later on. This is just a picture of the office hours. It's, it's truly inspiring. Um, it's not only great for the startups, it, the feedback that we've gotten from Googlers is amazing, that uh, they come back to their jobs feeling not only inspired but also realizing that they help someone and that they know a lot that can actually benefit the community so they keep coming back. And there's, there's been more than 300 Google mentors this year alone. And this is Tech Bikers, and thanks, Marguerite, for mentioning it earlier. This is uh, my labor of love. So I thought that it would be really powerful to build community, not only with educational programs, but actually doing something together for the good of the greater society. So we created a non-for-profit organization called Tech Bikers that builds community through cycling. And we've already built a school and two libraries in Nepal following um, the, the ride last year. And about a month ago, uh, again, 70 of us, VCs, entrepreneurs, uh, tech people, rode from Paris to London, 200 miles, and we raised enough money to start 18 libraries in Asia. So uh, it's really inspiring. We support an organization called Room to Read. And if you're not doing any volunteering or charity work today, I highly recommend uh, you take it, even as a layer to your entrepreneurship because uh, it's not altruistic, it will just give you so much uh, and the impact is long lasting. Alright, so we talked about community and environment, next I want to talk about numbers and density of network. So I, has, I asked Reid Hoffman, the founder of LinkedIn, when he came to London for Silicon Valley comes to the UK, what's the one thing you think is missing in London to make it more like Silicon Valley? And he told me, you're missing density of network. You have all the components but you don't have the density, there's not enough angels, not enough founders, not enough mentors, product managers, etc. So startups need to grow and when they raise money this growth becomes non-linear, right? They, they need more partners, they need more customers, more technical talent, etc. This density of network didn't exist in London until recently. There wasn't just this congregation of people and there was also no center, like where do you go? If you want to be a startup in London, where do you go? There's always been a concentration of startups in East London but it wasn't something that people could touch and feel, it was just individual offices. So I'm happy to say that campus is now this place and the density of network uh, is really significant. And we achieve this density of network by embracing one of Google's principles of innovation and that's that open will win. Everything that we do is open source. Anyone can apply to host an event at campus. Any entrepreneur can apply and work from campus for free. And this sort of openness um, with a strong community sense enables us to reach these numbers, which I will share with you in a minute, um, that are really something that's unprecedented in London 
especially when you think about the context of this is one building in East London, which is traditionally not the best part of town. So this is um, just as a few numbers um, of campus in the past year and a half. We haven't been, um, it hasn't been even two years since we launched campus. We launched campus in March of 2012. We have 10 partners and we've helped more than a thousand startups. This is across programs, co-working, etc. I think this is actually a very conservative number. Um, we're just going to do a thousand mentorship sessions this year alone, so probably you can double that. Um, we held more than 1,500 startups event to date that brought more than 200,000 people. But I think one of the interesting stats here, I asked the cafe in the basement of campus, how many cups of coffee did you sell in year one? And they told me they sold 90,000 cups of coffee. I believe that there's a correlation between coffee and innovation, and we have pretty damn good coffee. It's actually, it's the best in town. So if you're ever in London, you should just come to uh, check that out. Um, I thought that it's impossible to talk about uh, campus and, and community and startup hubs without actually hearing about some of the startups. So um, these are by no means the best or favorite. These are just five startups that I picked because it wouldn't be fair to, uh, to just select a few. This is a company called Just Add Zero. They're creating a mobile phone um, made of bamboo, so it's sustainable. I don't think people in their factory are committing suicide when they're making the phones. And it's based on Android. It's a very small team. They're going to kickstart, um, kick, use Kickstarter to fund the project. Really inspiring. This is a company called Treaty. Uh, it's a Spanish startup that um, the founder studied in Chicago Business School, moved back to Spain, and realized, guess what? There's no jobs. And if he doesn't create his own job, he's not going to have a job. His friends are not going to have a job. And his kids are not going to have a job. So they created this really interesting product, which is um, essentially a 360 questionnaire to understand what your friends and family um, think about you. And uh, they've since pivoted a little bit, and they are essentially creating the, person, um, the personality graph. So imagine that employers or business schools will be able to tell, where is this person on the creativity scale or on the entrepreneurial scale? How is he as a team player? Is it more on the left or on the right? Uh, really, really interesting. Also a very scary concept uh, if you want to know what your friends and family think about you. Uh, check it out. This is a company called AdBrain. And it came out of one of the, our accelerator partners called Entrepreneur First. Entrepreneur First tries to answer the question, how come graduates from um, Oxford, Cambridge, UCL, Imperial, don't go and create startups? Why do they go and join a bank instead of creating startups? So they take the top entrepreneurial graduates and they accompany them for a year and help them launch companies. So this partner came to campus on the last three months of their program on the launch phase, when people were launching their companies. And AdBrain, uh, basically from zero um, to product to funding, is now raising a million and a half dollars on a multi-platform advertising um, startup. And they're doing really well. The, the kids are 22, 23 max. Uh, some of them are college dropouts. And I think this is the one before last. It's an augmented reality app that lets you shop for furniture. So I would point my, point my phone here, and I would be able to see every single IKEA catalog item on how it would look in the physical room, change the color, change the model, etc., changing furniture. And this company, it's called ITs, and I really love them because uh, they're a small team with a huge vision. They want to put Wi-Fi on all London black cabs, and the way that they're going to pay for it is through geotargeted advertising on the roof of the cab. So think about it, a million cabs, all of them have screens, they can show geotargeted advertising. So these are just five of more than 100 startups that work at campus every day. And you know, 100, again, is a very conservative number. So we talked about community and environment. We talked about numbers. But what about this magic dust that I told you about? So chance or serendipity is actually a factor of the previous two. The stronger the community and the higher the numbers, the bigger the chance that you're going to create the serendipity or, or chance, which is the factor that can make or break a startup. You know, it's a chance of running into your next co-founder, backer, partner, investor, um, customer, whatever it may be, just because you had a random conversation. A lot of the companies in the Valley actually owe their success to this factor of serendipity. And this is a picture from the Campus Cafe. Uh, as you can see, it's full. 
entrepreneurs know that if they don't come at 9.30, uh, half an hour after it opens, there's probably no chance that they're going to get a seat. But I see people coming straight from the airport with their bags. There's sometimes like self-organized delegations of startups from, you know, fill the blank European country. And um, it's really inspiring to see people just coming together and talking about their ideas and getting advice from one another and attending all of these events to, to network. So this serendipity happens across a whole range of services that we provide from raising the startup's profile to getting things done to recruiting, etc. And I won't uh, go into the detail. So where does it fit in the global picture? So Campus is part of Google for Entrepreneurs, um, which is my team at Google. I'm the head of Google for Entrepreneurs Europe. And we aim to empower entrepreneurs around the world through programs, partnerships, and products. So to put it in context, we have more than 60 efforts in 110 countries that touch roughly half a million entrepreneurs around the world on an annual basis. Uh, with our partners, the reach is even stronger. So even where places where we don't have anything that's a like Google operated, um, probably there's a startup weekend or a startup grind or one of our many partners that are operating there, building community and uh, delivering the values that we believe in. And we operate two campuses. So Campus London was the first and uh, the biggest one. And then in January this year, we opened Campus Tel Aviv, uh, which is a smaller version, but very similar idea. And Looking ahead, we're looking at building a true global network. So part of my job uh, in the next six, six months is going to be creating a, a network of campus-like environments in Europe, not necessarily owned and operated by Google. This is a new and uh, interesting thing for us, and we're still learning a lot, but actually finding great partners that can help us achieve scale and so I don't have to replicate myself or be away from my son for too long. We also are singing the, the success and stories of our entrepreneurs, and we help startups succeed. Google is still uh, very much a founder-led startup. It was started in the garage, and we believe that um, if other startups are successful, it's not only good for the economy and society, but it would be good for the entire tech uh, ecosystem as a whole, and Google as well. And we're looking at minorities, uh, closing the gender gap, helping underrepresented groups get access to entrepreneurship, and finally, um, how we can help startups grow also using Google tools and, um, and products. This is not a, a non-for-profit activity for Google, so uh, the AdWords team can do perfectly fine without Google for Entrepreneurs, but this is more of a way to help startups grow leveraging technology that was already created. You don't have to take it from me. I welcome you all to visit campus next time you're in London. And with that, I'll just say thank you very much.